Hello and welcome to Ground Forks and we are playing KSP and in today's mission we have one and one task alone, reach for the stars. Yes, this is what we will be doing today and granted, I'm acknowledging that you guys had a lot of your share, fair share of the spinning rockets on my uh, so far KSP series, so I'm gonna make this one brief. You know what? I'm going to include an additional one which will be going orbital, which will be episode 4, which will be coming almost immediately after this one. Yes, uh, I was actually thinking of cutting this down to make it a half episode so that you kind of just see it, but then the orbital episode got too long, it got up to 40 minutes, 50 minutes, and let's face it, it would be just too long. So I decided to actually go, you know, reaching for space, doing a suborbital mission, and also tasting a metric crap ton of uh, radio mount parachutes and all that jazz, and hopefully, while doing so, being able to go and this uh, to, you know, suborbital. So this is our rocket and as you can tell we are actually going to do just some minor modifications. Uh, I'm going to make full symmetry so that I don't things don't burn out. I've also replaced the, the tiny tin booster and everything with a hammer booster which will be big and I'm just going to clamp the big uh, the 1.8 uh, meter um, stack decoupler just to test it because we need to test it on the surface of carbon anyway basically on the launch site I'm also going to move this com flight computer down because I'm thinking that it's uh, helping the mass making my rockets a bit unstable and I think I have all the experiments let's see I'm actually gonna be it's the sounding rocket on so let's just save it and we will be launching it soon. I'm actually gonna scrap this one because this is an upgraded version so let's go quickly and hopefully we will be able to do it sooner rather than later. All right checking my thrust to weight which was one of your suggestions so thank you so much for your suggestions. Uh, I'll and thrust to weight 1.97 and 1.77 one of my commenters, I actually forgot to, to, who it was, suggesting to check my thrust weight. Thank you so much for that comment because I think you have just helped me to make orbit. Alright, before we actually go to the orbit we have some cash and I'm thinking of buying a couple of upgrade points because I have some cash to burn and I'm thinking two upgrade points would do quite a lot actually so I'm gonna go into invest one into the VAB and another one I'm gonna be putting into the R&D because I do like a passive trickle of you know science coming in here and there all right so flight control yes we do want to research flight control because without it our rockets are just spinning willy-nilly so I'm thinking this would be the next milestone to, you know, reach once we do the research and I really, really want to be using those. So, all right, let's warp to complete. All right, with that being done, we're going to do a quick rollout and after the rollout, we're going to be waiting for Dawn to actually launch this rocket because I really don't like launching sounding rockets at night. Let's do it. Three, two, one, go, 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 and immediately we detach this beautiful booster. Let's look it up. It's already spinning. Yes, we are once again using spin stabilization, and as you can tell, it is spinning quite profusely. I'm actually slightly concerned how it's going to go up, but it's still, as long as it's going up, I'm not going to be making too much fuss about it. And apparently it starts spinning fast enough so that it did spin stabilize. Wonderful. 830 seconds. I'm really hoping that we will be able to finally reach for the stars. That's the goal. Cannot engage the SAS. I don't need you to. I just need you to get into space. Please do. Okay, stage and let's continue. It's wobbling profusely. Oh my god, here we go again. Come on, please, please, please do make it into cross the Carmen line, at least for crying out loud. 
Don't you beep beep me, you buster. You go and you break that apple abscess. I have actually no idea why it's spinning so profusely. It was spin stabilized and I staged it. And I am not using SAS, so I would have expected it to continue spinning. But for some reason, it just didn't want to collaborate too much. But anyway, even with this kind of spin, it's still providing enough thrust so that we can go above, I don't know, 75-ish or 70. So I'm hoping that once this stage burns out, that we will be still have enough, you know, to go up, up and away. Let's de de decouple this. And as you saw from the last, we were going around 88 apoapsis, which means we will be going to space. Oh, yes. And there we go, the music cue, finally. After two episodes of spinning rockets, we have finally reached space. Yoo-hoo! I really feel almost like I'm playing a freaking RP1 on this. Kerbalism doesn't make it easier. And I've actually done a pretty nice selection of mods to, to make it challenging. There we go. Anyway, I figured I'd shorted out the, you know, spinning part, so I've decided to take on the re-entry. So I have hotkeyed the parachute so that I can arm it at any point where I really need to. And... Come on. Do we have somewhere radial shoot mark 12? This is mark 16. Do we have anywhere mark 16 parachute? Yeah, there we have 3000 to 10,000 meters, 50 to 190. Okay, can we actually make it? Okay, come on, just a speed requirement, and then we will be hitting that contract right on the head. Come on, hit it, Grumforks. There we go. Another contract done and done. Perfect. So I guess that's those two contracts. Parachute, decoupler and I'm thinking reach for the stars should be completed. So three contracts in one go. Well, that sound pretty good. I'm actually thinking of activating Communitron so that we get a chance to send out the data. And as we are gently descending uh, last couple of meters, let's see if the antenna survives because I'm hoping to be able to continue sending science. Look at this. The experiments are still running for another 15 minutes. So I'm actually going to let them run because we need all that important science. Yes. Wonderful. And there we go. So now I can actually recover that and be none the wiser. Perfect. Look at that. 4,000 funds and still some science. That means we can unlock the next node. And I'm actually was thinking between basic science, which give us a lot more experiments, or survivability, which gives us some of the nice radial parachutes, even. Hmm. It gives us a personal parachute. Oh, that makes it all the more worthwhile, doesn't it? I don't know, these basic science could give us a lot more experiments. I'm actually thinking I should probably be purchasing that experiment return unit. Mystery goo, yeah, let's go with that one. There we go. Node will unlock in two days, four hours. That's wonderful. Okay, monoprop fuel cell to life support. We have some additional upgrades. That's perfect. All right. Sounds to me like a very successful launch for today. And I'm actually thinking since we'll be launching bigger rockets, let's upgrade the launch pad because next rocket which we'll be launching, it will go orbital. Yes. 
Should I be upgrading the tracking station? Um, actually, that sounds almost, yeah, look at this, Orbit Carbon. And many more contracts to be done. Tell you what, guys, I'm thinking actually I'm gonna cut it here. I'm gonna accept the orbital contract, but that will be happening in the next episode. Until then, thank you very much for watching. Like if you like the episode, hit subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. This is Grumfrog signing off.